Hello everyone, I'm Crow77, and today we're looking at a method for parsing complex weights. This is geared mostly towards newer players that haven't learned all those complex shapes yet, and can get lost pretty quickly in those kinds of hands. But even you veterans out there might be able to pick up on a couple concepts. So there are several thousands of different shapes out there that your hand could be in. Instead of having to memorize all the combinations that those can be, and what tiles improve them from there, I mean who has that kind of time? We need to have some kind of quick heuristic to help out. A lot of very experienced players may be able to just glance at a ton of different shapes and be able to tell you what they're waiting on. But how do you bridge the gap and learn all of them in the first place? There's so much going on within the incredibly high number of different shapes in your hand, but one of the harder ones to learn is sections of complex shapes that have one or more triplets in them. So let's take a look at a tool that I have that can help out, just for learning purposes. I call it Crow's Complex Branching System for Learning the Weights of Complex Shapes, or CCBSLWCS for short. On second thought, that might be harder to remember than the tool itself. Scratch that. Let's just call it the branching method. I'll assume for the purpose of this video that everyone watching knows that, for example, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in a suit weights on 2, 5, 8. Instead, let's focus on those shapes with triplets inside them. These shapes are best when you can include your pair within them, so the examples we're looking at will include that as well. At a high level, those triplets are the main thing that introduce complexity. In general, shapes are pretty easy to figure out without them. The method I want to show you zones in and isolates those triplets to make everything easier to understand and look at the shapes piece by piece. For each shape, we'll branch off from the base shape by isolating a triple and moving it into two different shapes, one that assumes the triplet's a pair, and one that assumes the triplet is actually a triplet. Now note that this method does take quite a bit of time, likely much more than you can quickly do online when you're first getting used to it, so real life practice will be critical, at least until you get used to the method. But that's enough of this nebulous theory discussion. Let's take a look at what I'm actually talking about here. Now this is one of the simpler complex shapes that hands can come into. It's called an intotsu. We can see that this hand has two completed sets, so we need the intotsu to become two more sets of three and a pair to be able to win. It's a perfect candidate for the branching method. So first step here, let's isolate the triplet, in this case the tumon, and assume one branch of our split is a pair and the other is a triplet. Let's take a look at the pair branch first. When the twos are grouped as a pair, the two, three, four groups together very nicely. We can easily see that getting a sha or a tumon are the only ways to make the second set with these tiles, with the grouping as it is. So that means the shape waits on a sha and a tumon. Next, with the triplet side, we can see the sha has to be our pair, as it's the only option we have when we isolate the triplet completely. Because of that, we're left with the 3 4 rianmen, which waits on the tumon and 5 mon. So the shape also waits on 2 mon and 5 mon. In total, when we add all this up, we can conclude that the shape waits on sha, 2, and 5 mon. But this one is pretty basic. Let's take a look at a more complicated example. At one point, I had this hand in a game. It was online, and at the time, while I knew the weight was good, it would have been difficult for me to calculate before I learned this method. So instead, let's take a look at it here. This shape is quite a bit bigger, and as you can see, it has three onkos in the overall hand shape. Luckily, the onko of ton doesn't affect the weight here. But we're still dealing with two onkos. When there's more than one onko, as you can imagine, the weight is going to be a bit more complicated than the last example. But with this method, you can branch out and look at it in as many iterations as you need to. Let me show you what I mean. So let's focus on the two mon set first. Like before, we'll split it into isolating as a pair and isolating as a triplet. Then, after that, we'll do the same for the onco of fours and see what shapes it makes. When we assume both sets are pairs, the weight's pretty easy. Two pairs left in the hand means that you have to have a shanpon weight, waiting to complete the triple with one of them. So we know that this shape is waiting on two mon and four mon. Now let's isolate the four mon as a triplet instead. This breaks up our shape pretty well. Two mon is locked in our pair, with four mon being the triplet. So we have a two, three ronmen, so the shape waits on one mon and four mon. Are you following me so far? Keep in mind, this is just half the battle. We still need to isolate the two mon as a triplet instead. When we do that, we do the same thing we just did, 
branch off into isolating the formon as a pair and a triplet as well. When the tumon is a triplet and the formon is a pair, the rest of the shape comes out to be a nice san menchan, waiting on the 258 mon. So this shape waits on the 258 mon. And lastly, we can't forget about isolating both of them as a triplet. That gives us the last tile we're waiting on, just the 3 mon as a pair weight. Now let's pull it all together. When we take all these weights and remove the duplicates, we can see this shape weights on a whopping 6 tiles, 1 mon through 5 mon, as well as 8 mon. So while this method takes a while to draw it completely, and there's a lot that's really easy to miss in shapes like this, but with a little practice, this method will help you break down shapes in real time, without putting your friends to sleep while you think about them. This method is as deep as you need it to be. You can just follow the basic branching and just do it for one triplet, or you can have an, add in a second or even third triplet if your hand calls for it, although that's very rare in actual games. And though you may take a little while at first, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal if you want to start getting into the complex weights, especially in live games when you have the time to take a look at them. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any feedback, feel free to comment below or reach out to me directly. See you later!